2024, it's finally here. Another year down, another year spent watching countless hours of anime. 2023 as a whole was actually an insane year for anime. One of the most insane years of anime in my entire life and as a fan of anime. It's actually wild to think about like all of the absolute bangers that came out in 2023 go check out uh, my best things from 2023 video to hear more about my thoughts on all of the great anime that came out last year however that's in the past we're done we move forward so in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the most interesting anime from winter of 2024 and i'm just going to tell you there's some weird stuff coming out this year So naturally, to begin, we have to talk about probably the most hyped show of 2024, specifically winter 2024, Solo Leveling. Solo Leveling is a Korean webtoon which made a lot of waves in its release in 2018. Now, I haven't read a lot of Solo Leveling. In my opinion, this web series takes a, a lot of the really good themes and aspects of like fantasy shonen anime, dare I even say it, a little bit of isekai, and takes them and just executes them really well. To be fair, this really isn't that hard to do when you think about all of the trash tier isekai and fantasy anime that we've gotten over the last like five, six years. And 2024 is gonna be no different with trash tier isekai, but we're getting a little ahead of ourselves. Double Leveling follows the story of Sun Jin Woo, a 20 year old hunter in this fantasy world, a world where a strange gate has appeared which connects our world, the real world, with the world of magic and monsters. To combat this danger and rise of monsters, normal people began to receive powers and became known as hunters. However, our main character Sun Jin Woo is known as the weakest warrior in the entire world. Yeah, I'm sure you can already see where the plot of this story is roughly going. Of course, everything changes for our character Sun Jin Woo when he gets set upon a basically unrealistic and impossible quest forcing him to solo level now normally my alarm bells would start ringing for any type of anime like this because it very much seems to kind of fall in line with the traditional kind of like power shonen isekai trapped in a video game-esque type world specifically on the leveling up process and while in a broad sense this basically is solo leveling it basically is the journey of a weak character to a strong character and the trials and tribulations along the way of that character becoming stronger it does it in a way that's actually good and not cheesy. At least I hope. Like I said, I've only read a little bit of this web manga. I'm not the most familiar with solo leveling. Obviously, I'm decently familiar with it because it is extremely popular and it became, uh, you know, kind of viral over the last few years. And people are obviously super hyped up for this anime. One thing I think is interesting is that the studio actually behind solo leveling is A1 Pictures, probably most famous for really the probably most classic isekai of all time, Sword Art Online. Now, despite my hatred for the isekai genre, I actually think that this is a good thing. While yes, Sword Art is a meme, at its core, it is a really solid isekai, at least for like the first half. Sword Art only seems kind of bad in hindsight because of all of the tropey isekai shit that happens. But in, in reality, at the time, in context, Sword Art was one of the kind of like first isekai mainstream-esque isekai trapped in a video game world that really did all of these tropes. They weren't the first, but they were one of the first big mega popular ones. As well, solo leveling isn't actually an isekai. Our main character isn't transported into another world. I guess if anything, the other world is kind of transported into his world. But as such, it makes you kind of care about the world that our character lives in a lot more than if they were to just show up in the world and now all of a sudden they have powers like a video game. In general, I'm pretty positive on solo leveling. I think that the anime will probably be pretty good. I imagine it will be pretty relatively faithful to uh, the web series. And generally, if, since the web series is popular, if they remain faithful to it as, and uh, implement good voice acting as well as like good sound effects and music, I imagine that the anime experience of solo leveling will also be pretty good. However, anything is possible in the anime world and they could very easily butcher this show. Again, this is the studio behind Sword Art on 
Online, you know, Sword Art Online being an anime that started off pretty strong, continued to go pretty strong, and then fell off a fucking cliff. Next, I want to talk about the second season of Mashal Magic and Muscle. This anime is classic shonen power fantasy, but more kind of on the comedy goofy side. Long story short, Magic and Muscles follows a main character who lives in a world dominated by magic and wizards, though he himself has no magical powers or ability. What he does have though is giga hulking muscles and brute physical strength. Basically, if he was Naruto, our main character would be Rock Lee as he is forced to solve every problem he is faced with as well he joins a magical academy and he has to problem solve and face challenges but only using his muscles and his physical strength. I enjoyed season one of the show. It's goofy, it's fun, it's a relatively simple plot but it's executed pretty well. We love strong muscle boys, so yeah. I'll be watching the second season of this show. Who knows if it will actually be any good. The first season was pretty solid, though I slightly worry that the second season will kind of continue on with the formula of the first season. And it might get a little old fast if they don't implement some like new over the top challenges. Moving on to another sequel, we're talking about the third season of Classroom of the Elite. This is a psychological Japanese high school thriller type show. It basically follows a group of high schoolers, though this Japanese high school is not like your average Japanese high school. Basically, these students are ranked from A to D, depending on their prowess and success in academics, with the A higher ranked students being treated extremely well, while the lower ranked students are treated like absolute garbage. If you've watched Blue Lock, it's kind of similar to how the soccer players in Blue Lock are treated, depending on what rank they are. I really enjoyed the first season of this anime. It's relatively pretty simple, but it does these kind of like simple psychological thriller themes in a school school environment very very well again i've only watched the first season i actually need to watch the second season but i could see myself totally watching the third season of classroom of the elite i'm actually curious what the second season of this anime got on mal oh wow it actually has an eight okay i will definitely be watching the second season of classroom of the elite so i can get caught up to watch the third season when it comes out in winter 2024 generally i don't put like a ton of stock into my anime list uh, scores, because ultimately at the end of the day, there are animes that I think are good that the consensus on my anime list doesn't, and there are also animes that my anime list thinks are good that I think are bad. In general though, if an anime has over an 8 on my anime list, there's probably going to be something about it that is good and appeals to the general, uh, broader Public. Let me know in the comment section down below. Are you excited for the third season of Classroom Elite? Moving on, we have another fantasy comedy anime that kind of caught my eye. Delicious in Dungeon. This anime is one of many that plays on kind of a lot of the Dungeons and Dragons kind of tropes. Or D and D is really popular over the last few years. If you didn't know, obviously, uh, D and D and kind of the isekai anime have a lot in common. This kind of you know traditional fantasy world, kind of fantasy leveling, World of Warcraft, whatnot. All of this comes in broad aspects from Dungeons and Dragons, and it seems like Delicious in Dungeon is similar to that, but does this in its own unique, funny way. Delicious and Dungeon seems to follow the story of a adventuring party in a very kind of Dungeons and Dragons-esque way who venture into a dungeon running out of supplies and it forces them to do a taboo thing of eating monsters. And the story basically follows this party's journey into a dungeon to rescue one of their party members from a dragon and so this guy can cook the dragon and eat it. Personally, I think this anime looks kind of funny and I will be giving it a chance at the very least because it appeals to my Dungeons and Dragon nerd-like brain. I have no idea if this anime will actually be good or not. I think as a concept, it might get old pretty quickly, but hey, maybe it'll be fun for a few episodes. Oh my god, speaking of isekai trash, take a look at this f***ing isekai. My instant death ability is so overpowered, no one in this other world stands a chance against me. One, can we just talk about this like isekai meta of them having like basically like the same type of title? I am sick of this long ass title. Why can't we just have like normal anime titles again? Th th this anime is exactly what you think it is. It is an action adventure fantasy isekai where you have a main character 
who's extremely overpowered, aloof, and a bit of a giga chad. I guess this main character's whole thing is that he's giga powerful, but he gets bored and he doesn't, he isn't able to stay awake long enough to fight the monsters. Giga hard pass, not for me. Uh, if an isekai is going to be interesting, it needs to actually do something unique and interesting instead of continually playing on these oversaturated themes that, uh, you know, are in every single isekai to come out over the last like six years. I'm sick and tired of the isekai genre. It needs to die. And then there's this fucking trash, Tales of Wedding Rings. I'm not gonna lie, they got me with the pretty cool cover art, but it wasn't until I scrolled down and saw themes, harem, isekai, action, fantasy, romance, etchy. I'm not gonna lie, the fact that harem is a theme on my anime list is fucking insane. <laughs> so I guess this is like an isekai kind of fantasy story about two childhood friends who like reunite 10 years later, but now they're hot and sexy adults. And there's like a would they, won't they throughout the whole entire thing. Instantly when you see Etchy, you know that this shit is going to be horny bait the entire, the entire story. And the easiest way to tell is to look at some of the art the promo art for this anime. I mean, Jesus, look at this. I mean, good fucking God, respectfully, I might add. Rounding off my winter 2024 uh, isekai anime rant, we have Ishida, an anime which doesn't really seem like an isekai to me when I read the synopsis, though the fact that they list isekai as one of the themes does make me a bit concerned. In a world where the Demon King has died, a host of demigods capable of felling him have inherited the world. These champions each pursue challenges against formidable foes and spark conflicts among themselves. The battle to determine the mightiest of the mighty begins. In many ways, this anime feels like it's going to be kind of like a fate ripoff because there's like uh, several characters, each with their own kind of power, ability, mastery of some kind of a, a combat that all are, you know, fighting against each other ultimately to decide, I guess, who rules the world. I will, however, be giving this anime a few episodes to see how good it is. Personally, this anime feels like it's going to be a kind of fun, like, gory, intense, violent battle anime, and it will be a, an anime where you could just, like, maybe turn your brain off and watch some crazy fight scenes. There's a good chance that will be an absolute cluster but to me, as far as an anime that you can just watch and turn your brain off, it looks like it might actually be good for that. As well, in 2024, the third season of Blue Exorcist is going to air. Uh, I don't really care about this. I mean, Blue Exorcist is kind of your, your classic, like, shonen-esque show. This is the third season of it. Uh, I think that Blue Exorcist is, is fine. It's, it's, you know, it's your classic shonen. It does shonen things, and it's relatively, you know, pretty basic. Really, unfortunately for Blue Exorcist, they're straight up competing with Demon Slayer and Jujutsu Kaisen, both anime who have broadly kind of similar stories and themes. It actually blows my mind just how many isekai are coming out still even in 2024. Like this genre just refuses to die. Oh, hey, we got the fifth season of Kingdom coming out in 2024. That's pretty hype. Kingdom's a fantastic anime, by the way. Highly recommend, though it is you know, a little bit long. If you like history and military anime, though, Kingdom is great. Uh, there's not many other anime that do that type of genre better than Kingdom, in my opinion. There's a couple of anime that have follow-up seasons that I am uh, curious to watch, like the second season of Marshall, and obviously there is Solo Leveling, which is really the kind of light at the end of the tunnel uh, for winter anime of 2024. I'm sure there might be some other stuff in here that could take me by surprise and end up being um good but overall it looks like uh winter 2024 as far as anime goes uh is going to be a little dry i expect a lot of people talking about solo leveling in the next month however though if there is an interesting upcoming anime that comes out in winter 2024 that i missed please let me know in the comment section down below and i'll make sure to add it to my list of anime that i'm going to be checking out over the next couple of months as always guys if you enjoyed the video learn something new make sure you like comment and subscribe as your engagement on these videos really does help to support the channel. Uh, expect some videos over solo leveling over the next month uh, as I'm definitely going to be watching this anime and fingers crossed that it's actually as good as I think that it probably could be. As always guys, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, drink your water, hug your mother, stay safe out there. Peace. Love. Auto.